Yeah, greetings people. Um, Dr. Martin Glinner here. I'm a criminologist. Uh, I'm a researcher and I also now do evaluations of projects and other people's research. Um, I finished my doctorate two years ago, um, uh, followed on the back of doing a master's. Um, one of the things that was very important to me, um, what I've noticed about in higher education, is people do assignments, essays, dissertations, theses, and once they finish, nobody actually reads it. And one of the things I wanted to do is to kind of create a legacy for my work a uh, long time after I've gone. But I also felt I wanted people to read my work. So I approached Routledge, um, one of the world's leading publishers. I felt a bit like Usain Bolt. I wanted to go for the gold standard of publishers. Sent them my PhD thesis, and lo and behold, they published this. Um, I'm very proud of this. It's called Black Men, Invisibility and Crime. Um, the importance of it, for me, is that in my work in desistance, and desistance is really about, in terms of my research, is about the theories and practice of what makes people stop offending. In my case, over the last 30 odd years, I've seen the disproportionate amount of black men in prison. And for years I had to explain why do black men get involved in crime and why do they do this. Well, I wanted to look at something different. I wanted to look at what would make black men stop offending. So what I decided to do is I put a PhD proposal together. I did it at Birmingham City University. I spent part of my research in Baltimore in the USA, looking at the African-American context. I spent a fairly significant period of time working in a therapeutic community in prison, a prison called Glendon, to look at whether therapy would stop black men from offending. And then I spent a lot of time up and down the country talking to men who'd stopped offending, those that were still involved in offending, and some of those who were about to offend. So I did the PhD. Now, the book differs slightly because with a PhD thesis, only three people are going to read it, which is your examiners, basically, and that, the sum total of that was three. But with a book, on the other hand, there's a commercial element of it. You've got to think about your audience. So when I actually wrote the book, I had to consider who the audience was. Obviously, other academics, obviously um, people interested in criminology who don't happen to be academics. But one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted people in the community to read an academic book because their stories were in the book. So I convinced Routledge in their marketing, even though the book is expensive, but to enable me to go up and down the country and promote the book in colleges, in prisons, in the community. And the importance about it is um, several things. One of them is in terms of the content. This is probably one of the first books in the world which puts African American and Black Britons in the same book. I wanted a cover, as you can see with the cover, that had a black person on the front of the cover. A positive image of a black person but with a provocative cover. I also wanted to challenge what some criminologists think about the issue of race and crime. Because in my experience, one of the motivations behind doing the book is that I wanted to question and challenge what a lot of white criminologists felt about the subject that I looked at. But more importantly in this book, if there's a reason to go out there and buy it, it's not just the fact that I've written it. It's for those of you who, from the road, from prison, who have children who are strained at the moment, who are going through certain situations, you may be studying sociology, criminology. This is a very good book because there's so many voices in this that you relate to. And that's one of the things I wanted to do. I wanted to create a book that was intellectual, but it actually spoke to people in the community because without the people in the community, the content of my book would be null and void. So in some respects, in closing, what I'd like to say to any of you watching, I started in a very humble way and it's taken many years to get here. Don't look just at the content of my book, look at the journey of writing a book. And I'd like to say to all of you out there, see writing a book as a legacy for your children, whether it's a children's book. See it as a legacy for your family, see it as a legacy for your critics who might want to tell you that you're no good. 
But the one thing I'd like to say is that as much as we have YouTube and Twitter and Instagram, what you'll notice is there's no substitute for looking in the pages of a book with something meaningful and important. And I would urge that if I can do it, all of you can do it, but do it your way, know your audience, and just enjoy the journey and the process.